remembering a Corona Marine. Here I sit on a park bench wondering, brave Marine, how will you be honored? How can I honor you? I see a park in disrepair, upgrade it. Remember he gave his all. Today marks the 100th anniversary of both the death and the Battle of Bella Woods, France, in World War I, June 7th, 1918, killed in action in a vicious and furious battle, fighting hand-to-hand -hand combat. You push the Germans back and turn the tides of war. Our brave Marines and soldiers, too, helped win the war. U.S. Marine Private William Frederick Moore, you instilled in me a sense of pride in country, neighborhood, community. You will always be a Marine. You personify honor and courage. How can I honor you? You were just 19 years old when you enlisted, April 15, 1917. You once walked the very streets I roamed, graduated from the same school my grandparents attended, public school 17. I will work for peace and keep your memory alive. Rest in soft peace, Semper Fidelis. Vincent J. Tomey. December 15th, 19, uh, 1898. In, on April 2nd, uh, President Woodrow Wilson went before Congress to ask for a declaration of war, uh, claiming that the, Russia, uh, the Germans had violated the Sussex Pledge and American neutrality and freedom of the seas. On April 6th, 1917, the United States Congress declared war and entered the war against Germany. On April 15th, war enlisted. Um, less, 11 months later, he would fight in a horrible, ghastly battle of Bedlam Woods. Um, June 7th, he was killed in that horrific battle. But that was the battle that turned the tides in the war against the Germans and made the Allied victory possible. So we owe a gratitude of thanks to all those men who gave their all for our country. Um, I, feel, I feel deeply about this because uh, he was a Corona boy, you know, a neighborhood boy. I always wanted to know about him, so I did research. Uh, I, I, um, I learned a great deal, and I want to share it with the people, and I want to instill in the people a sense of pride, especially school children, since I was a teacher. Thank you. Footnote, beside William Frederick Moore and the thousands of soldiers, foot soldiers and Marines who were killed in that battle, um, 
President uh, Teddy Roosevelt lost his son, who was a pilot, who was fought down, who was shot down um, in the Battle of Bella Wood. Um, his name is Clinton Roosevelt. Uh, the son of President Roosevelt, President Roosevelt, of the United States President from 1909 to, ni to 1901 to 1909. And, uh, he lost his son. What can I say? Good evening, everyone. On behalf of the PFC William F. Moore Memorial Association and VFW Post 150 Flanders Field, I'd like to welcome everyone gathered here this evening for this memorial in honor of PFC William F. Moore. This park is his namesake. Private First Class Moore was a Marine who served in World War I and was the first casualty from Corona Queens to be killed in that war. PFC Moore was killed 100 years ago on this very day in the Battle of Bella Wood. Bella Wood was one of the bloodiest battles for Americans in the First World War. He served in the 47th Company of the 5th Marine Regiment. Today, Marines from the 5th Marine Regiment still wear the French Forget on their, sh on their shoulder of their uniforms, an award that was given to them by our French allies for the res regiment's actions in France. This park was named in his honors in the 1920s. I was introduced to this park as a young captain by someone you all might know, Judge Joseph Lisa. For over 20 years, the judge and I began holding an annual meeting with Marines here to honor PFC Moore. And we used to do that with a toast in June. Today, it is fitting since it's the 100th anniversary that we bring together the Corona community to honor a veteran of your own. We join with you, your community, to pay tribute to PFC Moore, who gave his life so that we may live in this community and other communities around the world in freedom. The American flag flies above us, along with the POW MIA flag, to honor the commitment and sacrifices made by our nation's prisoners of war and those who remain missing in action. To lead us in our flag ceremony today, we have Marines here from the 1st Marine Corps District. And we would also like to welcome Catherine Brain, an eighth grade student who attends Leonardo da Vinci Intermediate School 61, who will sing our national anthem, the Star Spangled Banner. Would you all please rise?
Thank you, Catherine. That was beautiful. To lead us in the, to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, I would now welcome students from Leonardo da Vinci Intermediate School 61 who will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Please come forward. Hand over your heart, a salute. to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, students. I'd now like to welcome Father Hoppy, pastor of St. Leo's Parish, Father, we appreciate you being here with us this evening, leading us in our prayer. Good evening, everyone. It's, a, it's an honor to be with you today. You know why we're here. So I would like to offer both a scripture and a prayer. The scripture is from the Gospel according to Matthew. The, the colloquial title is the Beatitudes or the Sermon on the Mount. When he saw the crowds, Jesus went up the mountain, and after he had sat down, his disciples came to him. He began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. And blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. Thus. They persecuted the prophets who went before you. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, a Father who creates and redeems, who loves and forgives, who hears the cry of the poor, hear our prayer now as we remember your son, William, a brave man from Corona who perished on the battlefield of France in the service of freedom. He died in Bella Wood as a member of the 47th Company of the 5th Regiment of the Marine Corps in one of the bloodiest engagements fought by our countrymen during the war to end all wars. As we remember his sacrifice this evening, we recognize that while war seldom achieves the peace that is longed for, sacrifice, like the sacrifice of William and the sacrifice of your son Jesus, can inspire others to dedicate themselves to peace and the loving service of others. Help us, O oh God, to dedicate ourselves to the service of peace. Grant us a spirit of faithfulness to be your faithful people and to be faithful to the memory of our brave soldiers, sailors, and Marines who have died in war, and to pledge our care to the veterans who have come home from the conflicts. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
Thank you, Father. Please, take a seat. I'd like to recognize our distinguished guests here tonight. Uh, I would, Councilman Moyer from the 21st Council of New York representing Elmhurst, Jackson Heights, East Elmhurst, and Corona, Francis Moyer. We also have representatives here from Queen Borough President's Melinda Katz's office. Thank you for being here. And I would especially like to welcome all our veterans here this evening who have come from far to be with us here today as we honor one of our own. Thank you for being here, gentlemen. And ladies, forgive me. Many here today might have noticed that during the month of May, you see many veterans displaying a red poppy on their lapel. And you might wonder, why the red poppy? The poppy was the inspiration for a poem in Flanders Fields. It was written by a Canadian Lieutenant Colonel, John McRae, in May of 1915. McRae's good friend had been killed in the battle the day before. That battle was the second battle of the Ypres. It was in Belgium. And as McRae looked out onto the battlefield, he saw the red petals of poppies coming up through the churned soil that had been a battlefield just days earlier. Those poppies caught his eye and he wrote a poem called In Flanders Field. In your community, you have a VFW post 150. It's called Flanders Field. And we are fortunate enough to have us with here today, Mike LaCorey, a US veteran from the Korean War, who is the commander of VFW post 150, here to read In Flanders Field. Mike, will you do us the honor? Good evening, everyone. I will commence that reading the script here for the Flanders Field. In Flanders Fields, the poppies blow between the courses, row on row, that mark our place, and in the sky the larks, still bravely singing, fly scarce heard amid the guns below. We are dead. Short days ago, we lived. Felt dawn, saw sunset glow, love ever love, and now we lie in Flanders Field. Take up our quarrel with the foe. To you from fallen hands we throw the torch. Be yours to hold it high, if ye break faith with us who die. We shall not sleep, though porgies grow in Flanders Field. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. The poppy flower that John McRae wrote about honors those who died on the battlefields and symbolizes their sacrifice. We hope that anyone here today who does not have a poppy will stop by the VFW post in the rear. They have a table where you might be able to pick up a poppy to wear on your lapel. To honor PFC William F. Moore and all the fallen soldiers, a memorial wreath will be laid at the base of the flagpole in front of us where a plaque in his honor has been placed. This will be followed by taps and Amazing Grace, which will be sung by Marine veteran Sergeant Elizabeth Kiones, and followed by the NYPD Pipers, who will also play Amazing Grace. We ask everyone to stand in silence and place a hand over your heart as we salute. To present the wreath, we welcome cadets from the Corona Cadets, Louis Carcaris, and Segunda Ludic Zakara, who will present the wreath.
have already I've already come to his grace that brought me safe thus far and grace. Thank you. For, the, for those who have a chair, please be seated. I'd like to thank Mary Guida from Guida Funeral Homes who provided us with such a beautiful wreath. Thank you so much, Mary. A hundred years ago today, PFC Moore died fighting to drive an oppressive foe from France and stop the German army from conquering Europe. It is our honor to have with us today Brigadier General Thierry Dion, head of the military mission to the United Nations, the French military mission to the United Nations. General Dion joined the French army in 1978 as an infantry officer. In 2003, he commanded a French battalion fighting alongside American forces in Afghanistan. It is fitting that we have with us here tonight a representative for one of America's oldest allies here to give us a few words. General, will you please offer some remarks? Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for your warm welcome here. I will try to do my best uh, to speak in American. Uh, so please excuse me if... Uh, you can understand or not understand some words. But I, I try to do my best as uh, every time in my, in my career as an officer. So, ladies and gentlemen, dear veterans, dear brothers in arms, it's a great honor and a true privilege to address uh, this brief speech to you tonight here in the Queens, where one Marines hero grew up not far from this park. His name, yes, of course, is P.F.C. Moore. He enlisted in the Marine Corps in April uh, 1917, just one more, one month before the French Marshal Joseph Joffre and the U.S. Secretary of War Newton Baker signed an agreement which allows the commitment of the American Exper Expeditionary Force in France to stop the conflict. So, his life, like many other Marines, was already linked to the destiny of France. Indeed, on the 10th of June 1918, in the northern part of France, in the Hen, what we call beside the Chemin des Dames, where the French forces were lost and uh, were failed facing the German forces. The Marines of the General James Arbold conducted a counterattack against Germans and penetrated in the south of the wood of Bello. At the end of two days, they reduced the points of resistance made 500 prisoners, seized more than 35 machine guns and their reserves of ammunition. 
After three weeks of combat, the wood was entirely conquered on June the 24th of the 24th. Since this heroic event, all the armies of the world know the value of the Marines and dedicate you a great admiration for all your acts of war all around the world. Your cohesion, your discipline, your fighting spirit are for all the professional army an example. So yes, once again, it's a great honor for me as a general, but first as a soldier to bow to your flag which remains the symbol of our attachment to our country, which for soldiers can go until the sacrifice, sacrifice of our life. So God bless America. God bless the American Corps. Semper Fidelis. Thank you so much, sir. We truly do us honor being here today. I would now like to bring up our Marine speaker, Colonel Robert Getz. Colonel Getz is a CH-46 pilot who received his commission in 1989. But before that, he was an enlisted Marine who attained the rank of corporal before being commissioned. He has over 30 years of service in our Corps. Colonel Getz, stage is yours. What he didn't tell you is we were both in the same uh, TBS company about 29 years ago. Uh, thank you. Uh, bear with me. Uh, you've probably heard a little bit of this uh, before. Being the, being the last guy, I hate to be repetitive, but uh, uh, we'll go right into it anyways. Uh, World War I had been raging in Europe for almost three years, uh, as the general said, when the United States entered in April 1917. And it was about that same time that the man we honor today, Private First Class William Moore, enlisted in the United States Marine Corps. Born in 1897, he grew up nearby and graduated from PS 17. Probably attended the same church that uh, the father is from, uh, St. Leo's. PSC Moore and over two million American troops would be deployed to Europe by the war's end. Just as for these troops, it would also be a coming of age for the Marine Corps. Long thought of as the Navy's police force and seagoing bellhops in the years leading up to World War I, the Corps had previously been removed from Navy ships and was under pressure to disband from then Pre President Roosevelt. In the spring of 1918, the Marine Corps would find itself fighting with the American Expeditionary Forces and Allied Forces in France, and quite possibly for its very existence. Russia's exit from the war freed up German forces from the Eastern Front and they pressed within 60 miles of Paris in late May of 1917. As part of the Army, U.S. Army's 2nd Division, the 4th Marine Brigade, consisting of the 5th and 6th Marine Regiments, got its opportunity and were among the forces to stop the German advance. June 6, 1918 marked the start of the Allied Offensive as they attacked German positions at Belleau Wood. It was on the second day of this offensive, 100 years ago today, that Private First Class Moore made the ultimate sacrifice. Six more attacks ensued before the Germans were removed from Bella Wood, and uh, depending on which historian you go with, the 24th of June or the 26th of June, and Bella Wood found its way into Marine Corps history. A heavy price was paid, higher than all the previous battles in the Marine Corps' young history at that time, combined. It was a war of attrition and mechanization due to the industrial age, with mass-produced weapons, trench warfare conducted in horrendous conditions, the first widespread use of tanks, machine guns, mustard gas, artillery, and aircraft, all inflicted massive casualties on all sides. Allied casualties were above 18.5 million, and on all sides, including civilians, the total was twice that, at 37 million. 
Another New York City native, Gunnery Sergeant Ernest A. Johnson, served 10 years in the Army before enlisting in the Marines. He was awarded the Medal of Honor for his actions during the Battle of Bella Wood, as well as another Marine and two Naval medical officers. Future Commandants Lejeune, Neville, Cates, and Shepard all saw action in France with the 4th Marine Brigade. As well as others, these Marines molded and expanded the Marine Corps into the force it would be in World War II. I'm a reserve officer right now, uh, and in my civilian job, I had the opportunity to be in uh, Paris two weeks ago. And like any good Marine, I skipped seeing the Eiffel Tower and went to Bella Wood. The citizens of Chateau saint thierry were preparing to commemorate the 100th anniversary of the battle. The town was full of French and American flags flying side by side, and, the, and on the 27th of May, 5,000 people attended the ceremony at Ain Marne American Cemetery and Memorial, where white crosses and stars of David mark the 2,289 graves, along with the names of 1,060 missing from the battle, whose names are etched in the walls of the Memorial Chapel there. The citizens of France remember. The following week I was in London and watched as the massed bands of the Royal Marines performed a retreat commemorating the 100th anniversary of World War I. The United Kingdom also remembers. Thanks to the foresight of the Corona Heights Civic Association in the 1920s, we're, we are able to be here today to commemorate this sacrifice of not only Private First Class Moore, but the 50 other men from around the neighborhood who paid the ultimate price during World War I. I thank Brigadier General Leon, the Queens Community Board, the PFC, William Moore Memorial Association, the VFW, the, pre the police department, and all those who made this event possible, and all of you who took the time to attend so that we too could remember. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Getz. And I didn't tell you he was a TBS classmate of mine because He's a colonel, and I'm a lieutenant colonel. <laughs> to give us time to reflect on our experience shared this evening, we're going to present a song, Mansions of the Lord, from the 2002 film, We Were Soldiers. It opens with a solemn trumpet solo, and it is sung by the West Point Cadets Glee Club. The words are provided for those of you who would like, you can join in.
will now lead us in a benediction to close our ceremony. Almighty God, we pray for our abiding grace on the families and friends of the Marines, soldiers, sailors, airmen, and Coast Guard who have not come home from war. We pray for your grace on those who have given their lives in service to this country. And we lift up in prayer for all those who remain in harm's way throughout the globe. Bestow your wisdom on those who lead this nation and shape her endeavors. Guide them and each of us by the example of our prisoners of wars and those missing in action who love country more than self and mercy more than life. May this ceremony serve as a reminder of the responsibility that comes with receiving the grace, the grace and the gift of freedom. And as we depart and return to our daily lives, we pray that you would enable us that when we are called upon to recall the fearlessness of our military and those who wear the stars of valor and live up to our responsibilities and thereby bring honor to you, O oh Lord, and this country. Thank you. This evening has been a heartwarming tribute to PFC Moore. And to have the, heart, the Corona community honor him like this is really heartwarming. For those of you who would like to know more about PFC Moore and this park, please stop by and see Vincent Tomeo, who's located in the rear of the park. He has a table and is a Corona historian who has set up a table with memorabilia to share on PFC Moore and World War I. I'd like now to give thanks to everyone for being here today. And I could not have done this without the support of many organizations. For all the Marines who came from far and wide to be with us today, thank you. To Mike LaCorey, Commander, and all the members of the VFW Post 150 Flanders Field, thank you for being here. The 1st Marine Corps District for providing the color guard. General Leon and Colonel Getz, you really add, added solemnity to our ceremony here this evening. Councilman Moyer, thank you for gracing us with your presence, and thank you for the representatives from Melinda Katz's office. Father Hoppy from St. Leo's. Students from IS-61, thank you for being here. Sergeant Kionis, your song was beautiful, thank you. And the NYPD Pipers. I'd also like to welcome the, or thank uh, the 110th Precinct, who was helping us out here so much, and the Parks Department for their support, and all the Corona organizations who've been out here today. The Corona EMS, the Corona Cadets, I wouldn't be in this park today if it wasn't for Judge Joseph Lisa and his brother Jim. Thank you both for being here today, and thank you for making me aware of this park. I'd like to also recognize Christian Kisigli, District Manager of Queens Community Board 4, and Matt Sheridan and Kevin Maloney from the Parks Department, who spearheaded uh, a refurbishment campaign in this park. I, I would be amiss if I didn't mention, and you didn't want me to mention, Al Perna from the Corona Community was put a lot of time and effort and got a lot of us out here tonight. Thank you, guys. I'm going to butcher your name, but Officer Sapinerni from 110, Community Liaison Officer from the 110th Precinct, thank you. The Queens County Savings Bank, without their funding, we wouldn't have been able to have this stage here and a lot of the decorations that you see here today. Guidance Funeral Parlor for the beautiful wreath that we were able to place at PFC Moore's Memorial. The lemon ice for the ice for the water and Sam for the sound. And I'd like to thank uh, Celeste Hughes who helped me put together this event. Thank you, Celeste. Before I close, just a few housekeeping items. There are donation boxes by the VFW table in the back. If you get a poppy, please support your VFW post. I'd like to know they shanghai me as a member. Please use the recycling bins and the garbage cans for any water or garbage and leave the park in a better place than you found it. I would now like to close this ceremony by welcoming back Marine veteran Sergeant Elizabeth Kionis, who will sing God Bless America. To be followed by the NYPD playing the Marine Corps hymn. Elizabeth, so Sergeant.
from above, from the mountains to the prairies, to the ocean, wide with Thank you all. Have a good evening. Take that handout about the history of the dough boy. Take the dough boy. All right. Um, take the take the history of uh, more. Yes. Take one of each. You got this. Everybody, take one. It's for you, I want to educate you. All right. This is what I want. I'll take you on a tour of my table. I set up this table to educate the people in the community uh, so that they could uh, learn the history and maybe perhaps instill a little pride. Um, okay, of course we start with our photograph of, of Moore. This is his grave, his tombstone. It's in Cyprus. Uh, cemetery, cemetery in Brooklyn. It's the National Veteran Cemetery, 625 Jamaica Avenue, uh, Brooklyn. And I have a quote here from Lincoln. And this is his grave. I have some handouts for people to uh, educate them about the war. I have a map of uh, northern France and Bella Woods. Uh, it was uh, a very... The, the Germans had advanced uh, within 50 miles of Paris and they could have won the war had the United States not entered. We turned the tides, we were fresh troops, uh, you know, and uh, so that was... Uh, the battle was the decisive uh, blow to the Germans. Okay, so I, I yes, yes, I will. Um, so here's a map, so that uh, kids or general public could know where the battle was. Um, this is a, a list of those men, soldiers, men and women uh, of all branches who died in uh, all our wars. Um, I have here. I have here a, a, st uh, a uh, statue of a doughboy from uh, St. Mary Cemetery here in Flushing. I was startled when I saw it. Uh, and uh, so I took a photograph and thought I would display it. Um, here's a history of the doughboy. It's a 
a little uh, history and a little puzzle for kids. And I wrote uh, a, a poem on a flag, the American flag. I have here an outline of on on uh, background of Frederick uh, William Frederick Moore, uh, 1897 to 1918, um, and you don't want me to read this, but no, okay. so we have this. Then we have different phases of the battle, uh, as shown in the in the different maps. I have here the story of Old Glory, because many people don't know that our national anthem is a poem, and it celebrates perseverance. It's not a war poem. It's not. Uh, it's. Uh, in fact, in fact, in fact, it celebrates the fact that we endured. Uh, the bombing of uh, uh, Fort McHenry. Okay, so uh, Frederick uh, Scott Key wrote the poem uh, as he saw the fort being bombarded, and you all know that story. Okay, so uh, then we have um, here a little uh, history of the park and more and the struggle to maintain it and upgrade it and keep it that way. Right now it's fine. Let's see what happens in a month from now. All right? You know what I'm saying. Okay. And here's the uh, national uh, headquarters. of. Uh, it's the National uh, Muse Museum for the uh, United States Marine Corps in Virginia. Uh, here's uh, Sem Semper Fi, Semper Fidelis. Uh, which is the uh, Marine slogan for you never forget. You're always a Marine. Right. And, um, and this is about the American Expeditionary Forces. And I have much more.